What's up my YouTube friends? I am gonna break down and make another video even though YouTube demonetized my channel. This video is important to me because I've got a lot of friends who uh, you know, ask this question a lot about headspace. What is headspace? So headspace, and I'll, I'm gonna read it from here, is the distance measured from the part of the chamber that stops forward motion of the cartridge uh, to the face of the bolt. Headspace uh, as a verb refers to the interference created between this part of the chamber and the feature of the cartridge that achieves the correct positioning. Basically what that means is the headspace and I've got a bunch of different cartridges here. Okay so I've got a 762 by 54 I've got, uh, looks like a 762 by 39 um, shell case. This is a 300 Blackout. This is a 223 Remington, uh, 44 Mag, I believe. Yep, 44 Mag, and this is a, a nine millimeter. We're looking at the different cartridges and what the headspace is considered on each one of these different cartridges. On a 762 by 54, the headspace is considered the distance between the front of this ridge here and the back of the cartridge here, and the face of the bolt, I should say. So wherever the bolt sits and the uh, front side of this lip is gonna be the headspace on this cartridge. If this uh, 762 by 54 was chambered in an automatic weapon. They would consider it from the shoulder uh, here to the face of the bolt here. But in the case of a semi-automatic like a Mosin Nagant, the headspace is considered from here to here. In a 762 by 39, the headspace is considered from the top of the shoulder here back to the face of the bolt. So this is, this is what we're concerned with here is the distance between uh, where the cut inside the chamber is for this shoulder and where the bolt stops, uh, the face of the bolt stops on the cartridge. On the um, the same with the blackout, it's going to be from the shoulder to the bolt face. 223 is going to be the same. On this 44, uh, this is a little different than, um, and this, this one's going to be similar to the 762 by 54, where the headspace is considered from the front of this lip to the back of, or to the, to the bolt face. Um, there and on a nine millimeter or other, you know, small arm cartridge, it's going to be considered from the ledge where uh, the, the relief cut is inside the chamber, which would be here to the bolt face back here. So, those are some different, uh, uh, you know, different styles of head spacing that we've looked at, and basically today. We're going to be concerned with the 762 by 39 because that's what we're working on. Okay, so why would we need to check the headspace on a rifle? See, we've got our we've got our AK, and we do some type of bolt modification. And we take the factory bolt carrier and bolt and we replace it. In my case, I've replaced it with a mill sur carrier uh, surplus bolt. Both of these are Polish and uh, a nice little adjustable gas piston, which I'm going to talk about in another video, so we're not going to get into that here this time but when I change this bolt 
and I go from the factory stock one to one like this, I want to check the head space and I want to make sure that the clearance is there and everything is in order to make sure that this firearm doesn't explode when I go to use it. There are a couple ways of doing this. So, number one, obviously, is with a go, no go set of headspace gauges chambered in whatever, you know, whatever particular rifle you're testing. You've got your go, you've got your no go, you've got a field gauge, which is going to be even a little taller than the no go. That's, that's the final stage. And uh, most people will just test with a field gauge. I think testing with the go and the no-go gives you a little bit more uh, leeway as to how long or the longevity of the barrel assembly and its uh, position against the bolt is. So I've been gunsmithing for 20 years, uh, probably more like 25 years. I'm 38 years old. I started when I was really young and when I was young, when we talked about headspace and checking headspace, we didn't have go and no-go gauges, gauges you know, that we could buy off of the popular channels, you know, eBay and Amazon and, and whatever. So what we had to do was we had to make our own go and no-go gauge. And so the idea behind this video is to show you that if you don't necessarily have go no go gauge um you know available to you and you wanted to do a project like replacing the carrier and the bolt or even just the bolt per se um, you can use this method and i'm going to show you here that it does work and uh this is this is how we did it for years before um you know the advent of cnc machining and precision machining where things like this were like the go no go gauges were readily available. So what we do is we we set up, we get our the ammunition we're going to be using and you know, I want you to be aware that this is live ammunition. And what we'll do is we'll set up, you know, 8 to 10 rounds in a row on a nice flat surface like I have here. And then we'll just kind of look at it from the back side. And you can see that the shoulder height is slightly different on all these cartridges. So you're going to go through and you're going to pick out the two that are the least in size and, and closest and set those aside. And you're going to pick out two more that are the most out of those 10 in uh, shoulder height variation and set those aside. And so what I've done here is I've already done that. So I've got my min here, I've got my maximum here. And um, you know, you can find the information online for the, the size that you're looking for, but generally you're looking at about five thousandths of an inch difference from your go to your no-go gauge. And uh, on these specific uh, gauges here, they are six thousandths different. So this is 1.252 inches, this is 1.258 inches. So there's a six thou difference between the go and the no-go gauge. So how do we achieve that? Well, it's pretty easy. We build up the back side of the uh, of the primer side of the cartridge and we build it up you know four or five thousandths of an inch thick and generally one of the best things you can do is use this foil tape this is uh you know like hvac tape you would use this and uh, you know you're gonna first you're gonna get yourself a piece You're going to peel the backing off because we're, you know, obviously that's not going to be a part of the measurement. And then you're going to measure, uh, you know, what, what does it look like now? And so I see here that this is, uh, this is three and a half thou. 
okay? And so I know that if I press that down, it's gonna get a little flatter to about three. If I double it up, um, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be about six thou. And so really the idea is to start with one layer and you will, you'll take your, your round, you're gonna stick it on and then you're gonna trim it off with a, with a knife. So you're just gonna go around, you're gonna trim it all off until it's on there and it's not rolling over the edge of the cartridge. Okay, and you're gonna do that on one of each of your minimum and your maximum. The one without the tape is gonna be your go gauge. The one with the tape is gonna be your no-go gauge. My suggestion is to try it with one layer first, uh, three and a half or three thou, and that's gonna give you really, really tight tolerance on whether or not you're you know, you're in spec and you're, you're good because obviously if it won't go on a three and a half thou, it's not gonna go on a six thou. And if, you know, we're talking the case of these two um, uh, climber gauges, these are six thou. So we know that the three and a half is gonna be sufficient. Ideally, what you wanna do is remove the firing pin and the extractor claw while you're doing this. but mine isn't cooperating right now and I didn't bring my other, um, my other punch, which is longer up. So we're gonna do it without, but I did go ahead and I put the safety on so that it's, the safety is engaged and the hammer is not gonna release. And we're gonna start by putting our go gauge and you can see here, We've got our minimum go. Okay, and then you're gonna close the bolt and see if it closes. And we can see there that it's closed. It's completely forward. Closes on it good. Now we're gonna to switch to our minimum no-go gauge. Okay, so I've got my no-go gauge seated in, in the bolt. Again, I've got it on safe. And then we're gonna close the bolt. We're gonna see that it goes and stops before it closes and it does not close on the three and a half um, thou gauge. And we'll do the same with the, with the max, the go and the no-go. And we'll test those and we'll make sure that the rifle is closing on the go gauge and not closing on the no-go gauge. And that is how you check the headspace on, a, well, in this case, uh, an AK. So if you don't have access to a go, no-go gauge, you can get this. And, uh, you know, you don't even, you don't even necessarily need this because I've just measured it for you. And we know that, uh, you know, uh, it's about three, somewhere between three and five thousandths of an inch thick, this foil tape. So, Make your own go, no go gauge. Uh, you know, I, I hope it helped you. Thanks for watching. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about this adjustable piston uh, and, and what its function is and why I put it in my rifle. And uh, so like, subscribe, help me out. I need a thousand subs so that uh, YouTube will release my funds that they're holding hostage. So help a brother out. Thanks.